Hey there everyone, uh, another quick progress update video for version 3 of the Community Thing Creator. Um, <laughs> it's been a trying few weeks, uh, broke my ankle uh, about three weeks ago, uh, I had to have surgery, and then I've been on hydrocodone for about two weeks, so I've run out of hydrocodone, and um, so I got back into uh, the swing of... Um, Coding again. Uh, I really didn't trust myself uh, coding while under the influence of hydrocodone. So, um, so here we are, a little bit delayed, but uh, progress nonetheless. And I've got a couple of uh, cool things to show off. Um, and again, version three is all about effects. Okay. So, with that said, let's uh, let's let's get into it. All right, let's put it in full screen. And before I go into the, the, the effects side of things, I was just making a couple of visual tweaks. And one is here. This was a label before, and it really wasn't obvious what you could do with it, um, just in case some people were just saying, OK, that's my current view. But it's actually a drop down. Um, and it was, has always been a drop down. Um, it just wasn't visually um, uh, configured that way. All right, so now you can clearly see it's a drop down. All right. Uh, the other thing too was, um, let's see, when you edit the theme and you've got the theme specific options, I've covered this before, I'm not going into great detail, but I just didn't like the appearance of the panel, it seemed to kind of float, um, and uh, w which would be okay if it was a full screen view I guess but it's not so anyway I've encased it in a border and uh, the other thing too that wasn't absolutely clear visually was if you had made changes and an asterisk appeared one the asterisk was too small and two it was like well what does that indicate right so if you hadn't watched my video you wouldn't know what this asterisk would mean okay so I've just put a little tip at the bottom indicating what the asterisk means okay so it's just a little a little clue all right anyway regardless let's go back in and let's see i believe i've got an empty theme here yep and uh i'm just going to go into text games we can do it from here and i'm just going to move this over to the right middle let's add a couple of um yeah let's add some stuff let's do a background image uh, might as well name it as such hmm no you know what it's going to be fan art and i'm going to encase it a grid call this one background just in case you want to configure it so that you've got fan art and if fan art doesn't exist you can have a fallback and all this kind of stuff so I'm just gonna have fan art in here don't have fallback let's set the background grid to full screen let's set the fan art to build parent um let's see do we I haven't got anything yet whoopsie let's do center center let's do uniform to fill and let's say metadata metadata image let's say uh, fan art all right okay that's cool okay so I've covered some of the new uh HLSL shader effects okay so, for example, I've got uh, Pixelate. Okay. I've shown this one off already. <clears throat> but let's go to some of the basic ones. So we've got Blur. Okay. All right. And now we're going to go into Animations. I'm going to hit New. 
going to say, uh, once I select a game, this is what I want to do. And now, based on the effect of the element that I'm working on, it's now added effect properties to the animation dropdown. So as I selected uh, blur, the only property available is the radius of the blur, okay? Or how much of a blur do you wish to apply, all right? So I'm going to select effect radius. I'm going to say once it's selected, I'm going to say I want maximum blur and then essentially switch it off. And it's going to take, I don't know, two seconds to, to complete that operation, okay? So if I hit OK, and there you go, comes into focus. All right, let's pick a different game. All right. Okay, so I'm going to switch the um, the effect type for background. Okay, and and just to make it absolutely clear, like I said, if you this, this container here can have multiple images. So you could say, if fan art doesn't exist, then use gameplay. If gameplay doesn't exist, use a fallback. So potentially you've got three images that you could display, right? Um, and because I'm applying the effects at the highest level, the container itself, background, whatever you display within it will have that effect applied to it. So in this case, blur, all right? But I'm going to change the effect type to pixelate. All right. And because I've changed the effect type to pixelate, the animation is now in error. It's not crashing. It's just saying, Hey, I can't, I can't run this animation because that was previously configured to animate the blur radius. Okay. So we double click and now we can affect the pixelate, uh, amount. All right. So we change that. And, and I'm going to do two steps here, and I'll explain why, actually. Let's, uh, let me back out. Um, excuse me. So, pixelate at the lowest level, level one, obviously, it's just a big chunk. And as I move, it's finer detail, right? And then all the way up to 1500. So, it's essentially the original image, okay? Now... That's going to take an awful long time to kind of go from one all the way to 1500. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go from one to about here-ish. Okay. And then I'm just going to snap it to fine detail. All right. Um, so if you're not following, um, that, that's okay. Here we go. We're going to do two animation frames. Um, and again, once selected, we're going to change pixelate. We're going to go from, um, one to, I don't know. I think I said 50, right? And that's going to take two seconds. And then what I'm going to do, I want to do another pixelate starting at two seconds. And I can just say from current pixelation, to maximum so it will set it to fine detail and it's not going to take any time at all i just want it to snap okay so one to 50 two seconds at two seconds make it fine detail so we end up with that all right um i mean i can make that i guess one second one second. Like that. Okay. So let's pick a different. Oh. There you go. All right. So that's, that's pixelate and blur. Um, and I'm just going to leave that. Um, actually, no, it's going to be very confusing if I do this. So let's do um let's just hide that whole element for now let's add an ellipse 
button. Let's make it 500 by 500. And then um, what do I want to do here? The effect, <clears throat> I want drop shadow. Uh, opacity, let's change the color. Okay, orange. Uh, no depth, blur radius. So what I want to do is, is kind of have this pulsating effect, okay? I want the um, drop shadow to kind of do this, all right? So... Um, Again, we go to animations and I'm just going to say when the element is first loaded or first displayed on screen, just kick off the animation. All right. So because I selected drop shadow, drop shadow has a series of um, properties. Okay. In this case, I just want to affect the, uh, the radius. All right. So we're going to go from, um, from nothing to um, basically maximum uh, blur radius. And I'm going to set it to two seconds. I'm going to do repeat and auto reverse. Okay, hit OK. I think you can see that. Um, let's change the color. There you go. It's a little bit brighter for you. All right, so you can see that I'm animating the uh, blur radius now. All right. Uh, let's see, I'm going to disable that UI element. Let me add a rectangle. And again, we're going to use, <clears throat> we're going to use drop shadow. I'm just going to cheat here. Let me change the shadow color just so that you can see it. And I'm going to leave the direction as is, but what I want to do is animate the, you know, the depth. Okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, actually I can, I, I guess I could do depth and I could do direction at the same time. Just for grins. So let's see, two, what was it, two, 220? Can't remember where it was at. Yeah, we'll have it at 220. All right, so we're gonna animate two properties. And again, as soon as the element is loaded, <clears throat> So I'm going to affect, uh, let's see, direction. I'm going to say current direction. Uh, and I think that was 220, 220 plus 360. What is that? 580. And we're going to do two seconds. I want to do repeat. Let's see what we get. All right. So we're rotating the shadow. And now I want to affect the um, uh, shadow depth at the same time. All right. Whoops. I can do it in here, but let me switch that off. And then I'm going to alter the direction. I want it to start at zero, the same time as the rotation of the shadow. And uh, we want the, what was it? The effect shadow depth. So I want current to, I don't know. Um, whatever here. And then two seconds. All right. So we'll, I don't think that was very drastic. Let's, uh, let's change it. There you go. Yep. Uh, I'm going to change 
this one to be auto reverse. So it's going to take one second to go to the new depth and then one second to traverse back again to its original setting. All right. Like so. And then all we need to do is just repeat on the whole uh, animation uh, thread. Uh, let's add one more while we're at it. So we've got a runtime of two seconds, right? So we'll add a third. Um, whoops, start at zero. I'm going to do, um, we're going to do effect color. And I don't want current color. I mean, I guess I could do current color. And then the target color, let's make it um, this color just so it's nice and bright. And I'm going to do one second auto reverse. So it'll alternate between the yellow and the violet or pink or whatever it is. All right. There you go. All right. So there you go. This is um, where you can now animate the different uh, effects that have been applied to uh, the element. And I'm going to disable this one. I'm going to do one more. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's add a frame. Uh, thin rounded border. No. Let's say normal rounded border. Yeah, that's good. And then I want another image. Let's put it in here. All center, center. Uh, uniform is fine, metadata, and then game clear logo. Where are you? There you are. Uh, let's just add some padding values. All right. And again, on the frame, the container, what I'm going to do is add a rotate effect. All right. So how far do I want it to go? Let's say negative 0.35 each way or 0.35 in, in either direction here. So, um, new, um, I guess on one selected and we want to affect the rotation on the X and then we want to move from, uh, what did I say it was negative 0.35. Is that right? And then we want to go all the way to 0.35. Okay. And two seconds and Repeat, auto reverse. Okay. Now, Obviously, you can set up your animation uh, so that it utilizes current position. I'm just giving you an example um, so that as you transition through each game, um, you won't have it kind of snapping like this. You can continue from where it left off, but it give, gives you the idea of what you can do. All right. So you could potentially have something <clears throat> where a panel um, is rotated so that you don't see it. And then you can gradually just rotate it in and be done. You know, if you want to 
if you want to do something like that. But again, I just wanted to demonstrate um, what you can now do um, with the effects that are applied to your elements. You can now um, animate those. Let's see, I'm going to delete all this. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> now, um, I still have um, some additional HLSL shaders to uh, to be created and defined within the app. And I also want to tweak the rotation uh, after having uh, testing it now with the animations. Um, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's just, uh, it's not 100% of what I want. So um, I'm going to have it revised at some point and then, uh, and then I should be pretty happy with it. Um, but uh yeah, that, that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, and then the idea being is uh, to make this available at the wheel item level as well. So um, not only can you animate the elements themselves, but the element effects within the wheel item. That will be the next, the, the next activity uh, for version 3. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, plus, like I said, the new HL SL shaders that... Uh, uh, I've been thinking about recently. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, told you, quick update. Um, it will be uh, probably a couple more weeks before I've got something. Probably, a, a, realistically, another three weeks before I have anything to really, uh, uh, any, anything new to really kind of demonstrate. So if, if I get it done in less than three weeks, then clearly I'll put out another video, but I'm, I'm thinking at this point in time, it's going to be three weeks. All right. So until then, take care, everyone. Um, I hope you like uh, what you're seeing and how it's progressing and how you're coming up with ideas of uh, how you could leverage some of this new stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've got any kind of feedback or comments or whatnot, just uh, just drop me a line. All right. But anyway, take care, everyone. I'll catch you on the next video.